friends and welcome to crits and Nits, episode not 25 uh we changed plans before we started tonight and we're just gonna talk about knitting and stuff and hang out for a while um, so if you were tuning in to see what happens next uh sorry you're gonna have Come to wait a little bit weeks. sorry sorry not sorry we we, we we do what's necessary for us yep plus yeah. this works uh, my understanding is planning so my understanding is the party was left at the bar listening to a story. It's probably a lengthy story that they're having to listen to. I mean, Erasmus is there, so. Oh my gosh. It's true. Is his pants on? No. Oh, yeah. hey! As, Josh, as we were saying before Josh. coming live, pants are overrated. Pants are overrated. Yes. I think that like Erasmus wearing pants. wears pants because Owen tricked him and said, you have to wear pants for some dumb reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Erasmus' own fault for not checking. You know? Well, no, Erasmus believes Owen. He's like, oh. Aww. It's like, oh, well, I guess that's the reason to wear pants. You're right. Yep. <laughs> the, 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 the platonic life made energy is strong here. It is. Oh, and we love it. So we will start the way we always start and ask, uh, what have you been knitting on? 
Who wants to talk? So all my stitches fell off. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. As, she, just, as it does. Sense. Yeah, that that seems to happen when I when I do this here sometimes. I could I could pick them up though, but so I am working on a cowl. Okay. It's uh, it's like that. It's got the ribbing on the bottom, and then it's gonna be stockinette. It is the uh, sockhead cowl, which is like a cousin of the sockhead hat, Love it. which is ribbing, and then you make hat. There you go. And so it's just a way to use up Everything. like the whole thing of fingering. Yeah, uh, use it all up. I wanted something that was gonna be like automatic knitting uh when i was on the cruise and when i i went to boston last week and boston. You know, tr good boston. yeah boston i went to boston boston and... some knitting <laughs> yeah doing some knitting at the you red sox the game. The <laughs> <laughs> i did not have a car i didn't get a lobster roll either uh Aww. shocker uh, yeah well I, I was i was at the ballpark and the price was listed as market price. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not even going to ask. What the fuck is that? That's <laughs> one of those, if you have to ask, you can't right. afford it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're in the ballpark and it's like a hot dog, $12. Right. <laughs> <Like, laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like a lobster roll, second mortgage. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. So, anyway, so yes, the, the sockhead cowl has been a good companion for me. And then also my. Um, uh, I might have showed this last time we were here. Yeah, the, uh, the, puddle. the cuddle puddle wrap. Yeah, the cuddle puddle wrap. So it's got yeah. the um, when it gets to the pink, you do stuff to make elongated stitches, and there you go. Like nice. That. That's my that's my knitting. Now I'm gonna be quiet and try to put my stitches back on the needle while oh. I listen to the beautiful things that the rest of y'all are working on. I saw E holding something up. What you got? Uh, I'm in the middle of a row. Oh, can we come back to me? Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, are, are you counting? Because I know numbers. No, I'm not, no, I'm not counting, but I'm, I'm like exactly in the middle and it'll just all look okay. weird. Yep, that, that middle of the row thing is always a good time, good time. Uh, so if you've been looking at Who our else? Instagram. Oh, did we freeze? Oh, no. Oh, no. no. I might oh, no. just be you. I think it might just be E. It's just oh, no. E. Yeah. It is just me. Oh. I can hear you, but you're frozen. Oh, no. You. Oh, there you are. Okay. 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 We're back. Um, Yay. So uh, I knitted a dice bag. That's a thing that I did the other day. I've started working on uh, horror squares for a Halloween blanket that um, I had planned on trying to get done before October 31st. It's not happening. Look, Just hey, hey, but October thirty first happens attitude. every year. I know it's not happening <laughs> this year, and that's because uh, okay. the amount of stress I am having at work makes me not want to do a knitting project that makes me have to think too much. And that is very much a oh, you knit this much and then purl this much and then like it's a very like keep track of where you are pattern. Gotcha. So I went back to the never ending scarf because, as we all know, it is never ending um i'm trying to get this ball done before i go to dragon con so that i can put all of the yarn that i or the next ball in a different bag and carry it around dragon con yes. because there will be there will Plenty be waiting time. there will be waiting everywhere so yes. like I might as well ah have... good old line con <gasps> yes oh um, i'm going to and have that's to, i'm gonna have to send you pictures of my friend miri who is making an absolutely insane cosplay for Dragon Con. And if yes. you see her, you'll have to take pictures for me. I I definitely will. So uh, I will tell you this. I don't spend a lot of time at Dragon Con uh, because it is Too a lot. It is, it's five buildings in downtown Atlanta. Yeah. Um, and it is, it is a lot. Um, if I see her, I will, I will definitely go, oh my God, you know, Danny, she wants me to take pictures of you. Yep. Um, and, and you will recognize it because I believe uh, it is based on the, the carpet pattern of the Marriott. Yes. So the carpet <laughs> call too. The carpet call will arise again. Yep. So I will, I will send you uh, pictures from her Instagram so you can see. And yeah, if you see her, Please take but pictures. I, I, I love that. Oh my god! Did, wait, did she knit the carpet? No, she is. 
sewing oh. it. She is hand oh. stitching. Oh. Yeah. So, um, if you don't know, there is a carpet cult at Dragon Con. So this one hotel had this like it was iconic. The Marriott had this iconic yeah, carpet. It, the it's Marriott like had this patterns. And... Yeah. Well, they ripped it out, and it pissed a bunch of people off. Yep. So they started making like outfits at, that had this pattern on it and now we have the carpet cult um it's hilarious i fucking love it every time i see them i'm just like like somebody got a blow up like t-rex thing with the carpet like <laughs> pattern on it Fantastic. and it, they they go is she gonna be in the parade do you know i don't they know. always have a group in the parade possibly so um they uh, dra dragon con is a thing fucking wild Dra dragon con is uh, like i've been to quite a few cons at this point dragon con seems like it's a it's special even among cons it yeah. is it's a um lot. and i th think it's one of the biggest ones obviously san diego comic-con i think is the right. biggest yeah. right. and then i think i think san diego comic-con and then dragon con um, and, and and i've and i've been to san, san diego comic-con it is so corporate like it's just not fun to be oh, at it was more fun to be outside the convention center and see all the stuff going on around it and you know hang out and see all the cosplays but inside it was boring i definitely am one of those people that um i like to people watch like it's one of the things that i do at conventions i don't i don't go there to go see panels or anything like that though though during Dragon Con, if you ever go, you have to hit up Dad's Garage, which is a comedy improv place yeah. that does improv D and D. Ah, so and mm. if anybody knows who Mark Mir is, he is usually the DM for that during Dragon Con. So uh, we'll be driving in on Wednesday. And then Dad's Garage is doing their show Wednesday night, and we'll be going to see them because it's at this point it's a tradition. And Dragon Con is during my birthday, so we do birthday things while I'm down there too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been like been going. So first year was supposed to be 2020. Dragon Con got canceled. I don't know why. Can't imagine. Wasn't yeah. like there was anything going on that year. 2021 back broken 2022 wait literally got... no but that was when i was having all the the different problems that i was having the uh with my back where okay. i where i literally couldn't do anything um but sit and that was awful uh 2022 we finally got to go i finally got to meet the guy that i've been trying to meet since i've been in middle school <laughs> and was it voltaire you, it was voltaire <laughs> I love that he knows about that. <laughs> because he knows my obsession. <laughs> he, so I've been a fan of his music since I was in like eighth grade. Um, I was going to go to a show when I was in eighth grade, found out, oh, you have to be 18 or older to get in. Well, okay. Um, turned 18 was like, cool. Or yeah, turned 18. Next show he had, he had to be 21. <laughs> I was like, fuck! The second time, or after that, he had a show in Arkansas. I didn't have a car. My friend was like, oh, yeah, we could go. And then she bailed on me. And I was like, ah. Okay. Mm. Uh, 2020, Dragon Con. He's always at Dragon Con. He's been going for like 15 years. Canceled. And I'm like, yep. The, the universe was just against you, my guy. 2021, couldn't walk. But my girlfriend did this thing where she got him to take a video and Aww. like be like, well, I hope you're feeling better soon. And I'm just crying because <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? Um, at that point, Star wasn't my girlfriend. So, Is this why Star is your girlfriend? <laughs> this would be a good reason for Star to be your girlfriend in fairness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, kind of. <laughs> but, um, and then uh, 2022 we got to meet him and he is the nicest man. He's a lot taller than I expected him to okay. be. Like he's taller than I am. And I'm like, wow, oh. that's saying something. Yeah. Um, but he was very sweet. His fiance was there. She is very cute. Um, we didn't get to see a show because star has stars in the parade every year. 
mm. with Netherworld. Um, and we don't stay near the convention center because getting a hotel there is expensive yeah. and yep. they book out like a year in advance. Mm -hmm. And one year I would like to do that so I could go see Voltaire perform, but <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna need a time. Yeah. Um but yeah, um amazing. Uh Vision Video was there as well, they're great. Um all that jazz. I'm talking too much about Dragon Con. Let's move on. It, it, <laughs> Who else has been working on this? Or not. It was all because of your your knitting that you're going to take with you to Dragon Con. Yes. I uh, there will because be Lime cosplay. Con. There will yes. be cosplay for me as well. So nice. I but picked I up my stitches. Yay! Yay! They have been rescued. Yes. I Back finished. On the ranch. <laughs> that you got. Yay. Oh. I have a blurry thing. Um but it's stripey. Let me turn the blur off. I can. Ah, uh, yes. That is not a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever it takes. Excuse me. No. no. There we go. Okay, okay. well. <laughs> Look at all those stripes. I love it. I yeah. really like the fluorescent pink. I don't know what it is, but it, like, I love it. This one was, is, like, really soft too so i'm hoping oh, nice. like this will be like the comfort snuggle corner yeah. for oh. the child that receives this they'll have like oh. a nice soft corner to yeah. snuggle on i love that but yeah you're making, that, making that with scraps it. yep it's all scraps and stuff it's just getting bigger and bigger and i soon i will go this way, way. instead of <laughs> <laughs> and are you just using like the uh, the grandma's favorite dishcloth sort of plan um it's got an i cord edge oh, okay which i've never done before but uh -huh. it like makes its own little edging on yeah, it that's um, and then it's that's just cool. stocking it okay. back and forth i like it yeah that's, that's all a, i got that's something that i retaught myself recently was the i cord because ah, yes. danny you taught me taught I it did. to me while we were at goose con and then i forgot it forgot how to do Probably it we forgot as we do Not, not promptly, but enough to be like, hum, and then I was like, aha. <laughs> and I know it. it's not as hard as I thought it was. <laughs> yep. I am also right, well, in the middle of a row, so if someone else is not. I actually just finished a row, Excellent. so yeah. I can. I'm, I'm going to go get a book while you're talking. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. I know what he's talking about. It's cool. <gasps> yes. Oh. I'm concerned. You, you know, you know. What do you I? You pre-ordered it. Yeah, you pre-ordered it. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I'm excited about that. Uh, but yes, I am working on this. I like uh, that. It is the Farrell pattern by um, uh, Tega Hilliard. Is that her name? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tega Hilliard. Hilliard, thank you. Yeah. And I absolutely love how it's coming down. I had to learn like three new techniques for this. And there are definitely places where I'm like, well, next time I will be better at that. Uh, but I'm very pleased with how it's turning out. Now I'm in the repeat the same 12 rows over and over and over mm -hmm. again until it's the size that I want it to be. And then I can finish it. I love that. I and if anyone else wants to get a copy of that pattern, uh, Tyga Hilliard is still our current featured fiber friend. And you can find her patterns on Ravelry.com slash designers slash Tyga dash Hilliard. It's down at the bottom of our screen here. And you saw her name was like Cashmere Slut or something. Um, Cashmere Junkie is her username. Okay. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Cashmere Slut, huh? <laughs> Cashmere Junkie is her her username. Um, but I mean, her designs in fairness, are Cashmere is great. <laughs> it is. It is fantastic. Uh, but her designs are under Tyga Hilliard. Uh, and if okay. you use the code Lenoir10, you get 10% off any one pattern from her. It's only good for a single use, but hey, single use is a single use. And it's still okay. pretty good. One I'm more in... uses than you had before. Exactly. Yes. And that is a, a lovely sweater, or not a sweater, a shawl pattern. Um, like, yeah, nice I... and simple without being basic. That makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And I mean, I just, I love so how this lacing pretty. is coming out. Yeah. Yeah. You just wait until you finish it and you block it, oh. and it opens oh. up. 
I'm I'm so excited so for that because like there are definitely parts where I'm like I hope that like this edging comes together in the blocking, but I'm already looking at it and going I think it will because yes. like it kind of crinkles a bit while I'm working, but yeah, I can already see the shape of it. That's the fun blocking thing. Blocking is magic. Lace, especially, um, uh, you will hear lots of people say uh, lace looks like cat barf until you block it, <laughs> and they're not wrong. Mm. Ooh, I see Ernest knitting something. Yeah, I've been working on uh, <clears throat> on uh, on fiber tension because uh, I knit entirely too tight. That is something that takes much practice. Because uh, I was like, oh, I'll just knit this thing. And I'm like, oh, man, this is so tight. I can't even like I get... cannot budge it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've been working on that, that sometimes. <clears throat> and I also have been pretty mad about the uh, the sweater outlook for this season. I'm a really big guy. I'm 6'6", mm -hmm. about 350-ish. Uh, that makes me pretty large. So, like, you know, I get pretty mad and I have to either pay, you know, triple the money for a sweater or... With a more limited selection. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been working on tension because I really would like to knit a few sweaters to wear for this fall slash winter. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, if you're looking for a, a nice, simple, you cannot see this at all because it's a charcoal <laughs> and I've got a black background, but I'm wearing a sweater in a pattern by Tyga Hilliard. This is the Easy All Year Cardigan, and this is this is the second one of that that I knit, but I have knit one, two, three, four, five, six of them. I only have... Yeah, I three of them myself because my mom and my sister keep stealing them yeah that is uh i can't see the sweater it's like me standing next to you in a picture <laughs> right now uh... <laughs> oh yeah. camouflaged what a terrible time for me to be counting and danny's counting out loud too <laughs> oh numbers i remember oh, numbers. Two, i 17, knew he was going to do that too uh, 12 23. I just, it was right as I was also counting one, two, three. <laughs> and one, I was like, oh no. Four. Yeah. One, two, buckle my shoes. <laughs> well, as, as someone who has knit uh, a lot of sweaters now, I absolutely adore knitting sweaters. Um, I have, well, I've hit the point where I'm knitting sweaters for Ren now because I have more than enough to get me through the rest of my life. So I'm intentionally knitting for other people now. And I, and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we'll wear sweaters at least six months out of the year. It's a little warm for that today. I was out in the garden, well, back, out in the backyard, hacking away at blackberry bushes. Mm. Nice. Is there a reliable way to size up a pattern? Is that like, you know, like, you know uh, pattern gurus here? Is there a reliable way to size up a pattern for someone? There, you can do a lot of math, and it will work. Um, pattern math sometimes works for me, sometimes doesn't, because my swatches lie, because it turns out that when I swatch, my tension is nowhere near like it is when I'm knitting anything else ever, um, which is why I've stopped swatching. But you can get a general idea um, if you have an idea of the gauge you're knitting, like how many stitches per inch you're getting, and about what what you're going to need. Um, sometimes you can just go up uh, some needle sizes and that will make enough of a difference. Um, yeah, because I've, I've noticed, uh, much like most things in clothing, there is a, a, a lack of big and tall patterns. <laughs> that is something that the knitting community is addressing actively now. It's starting to change. It yeah. is definitely starting to change. Um, if you're looking for a very wide range of sizes. Uh, tin can knits are really good about that. They go up to three or four or five XL in a lot of their patterns. Um, and they do have a lot of men's patterns and unisex patterns. So it's not just women's sweaters that you're going to be looking at. Um, I the love their about... Gramps cardigan. Oh yeah, the Gramps cardigan's great. I, I've done that for a child before. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've 
I, I, I should pick it back up because Blueberry liked that pattern also. I did it as a baby gift, mm -hmm. but Blueberry liked it. And I was like, I, I can make matching ones for the whole family because of the size inclusivity yeah. in mm -hmm. the patterns that let you do that. I mean, and as a designer, so, so I, I design stuff, but I don't design fitted things, design hats and yeah. you know, cows and stuff like that, because getting the sizing is difficult. It, it, and it, because it's not just, it's not just, oh, well, this is 10% bigger. So I just make everything 10%, but well, you know what? Like a 10% increase in the bust does not mean a 10% increase in the height, right? you know, <laughs> so. Um. There are a lot Crazy. of designers, though, that are that are actively working on that now. Um, Jacqueline Seaslack mm -hmm. is great for a variety of sizes, um, especially larger sizes. Um, I will I will pop onto Ravelry later and get some links for you because there are some people that are really concentrating on that. Um, so we should be able to to help you find like bigger patterns, not just the ones made for skinny little size two ladies so all right thank you that is that is absolutely a thing though that that the knitting community as a whole is aware of and is demanding now because mm -hmm. more people are knitting and so you know you gotta make everyone a little bit happier well you know i think it's not just more people are knitting but with the democratization of uh pattern availability yeah. You don't have you don't have large publishing companies and fashion houses um, dictating. running, dictating exactly all of the stuff that comes out. It's like, you know what, if I'm a big guy and I want to design sweater that I could wear because I'm a big guy, then I can publish it. And it's so easy to to go from like if you write the pattern up and everything, yeah, that's that's a whole different thing. But the logistics of taking a finished pattern and being able to provide it for free or for sale is a piece of cake now, which was not true 10, 20 years ago. That is something that I truly appreciate about the internet is, you know, the democratization of that kind of information. Like one of the things that I'm looking at doing is doing some like Skillshare programs to learn more about video editing, because that's something that I want to get better at. Mm -hmm. And you know, 10, 15 years ago, I would have had to go and take courses at my local college and use their machines because I wouldn't have had the resources. And now it's like, I can pop onto a website and learn everything that I need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I mean, the flip side is, is that there's, I mean, there, there's not a gatekeeper there, you know, gatekeeping right. can be good and bad uh, because like you, 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 you th there's no, qual no quality control, right? But I mean, there, not... kind of, there kind of is because it's it's like the crowd quality control. It's like it's like Wikipedia yeah. where yeah. where where it's like people are keeping an eye on things and people yell pretty loudly when something's wrong. When it's crap, yeah. right? Yeah. Hi, Danny's mom. Hi, mom. Hi, Danny's mom. Hi, Danny's mom. Danny's mom, look at the pretty thing I'm doing. <laughs> I'm very pleased. It's lovely. I'm so happy. I I'm I'm always just giddy when I learn some when I learn how to do something that I didn't think I'd be able to do. Yay! You can do it, Red. It's also really warm here. My hands are sweating. Oh, working. gosh, right. Well, I have I tur um... turned on the fan in the office. Hello, Danny's mom. I was counting. I'm oh, sorry, I'm late to the party. Oh. I have two things that I've been working on. Um, one of them I only brought part. This is the waist tie for the the little oh. shirt thing that I'm making because I have to seam this onto the bottom of the shirt. Mm. And I think that had I realized when I signed up for this test knit that I was going to have to seam this, I would have done it. volunteered for the uh, version without the waist tie <laughs> uh. because I hate seaming things. I just, I don't like it. But eh, this, this seems like something you should have looked into. Uh, except it was a test, so I couldn't. Thank uh, you, yes. Mr. Punny. Um, but I had to knit 60 inches of waist tie. So I'll be sewing that on and um, hopefully tomorrow. And then I have to take finished pictures because it's been blocked and the top has been blocked. It's just sitting over there drying now. And uh, yeah, so all I have to do is seam it and then take modeled FO pictures, which is going to be a thing. 
F O finished object. Would be a fin- object. finished object. Okay, I went only fans, and I was like, <laughs> okay, no, no, that's, that, that's O F, not F O. <laughs> dyslexia. It's the dyslexic of. only fans. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> but then the other thing I've been working on is a shawl design, and I'm gonna show it upside down because I can show it right it's, side up. It, show it, right it, side it up. looks like a weird little triangle thing now, but that's the magic of blocking because it is going to be a half circle pie shawl. So it's going to be much Straighter. less triangular, I hope. Yeah. I did yeah. the math right. It should be because it stretches. Yeah. But again, do you have wires for blocking or I just do. pins? Or... I've yeah. Got wires, so, with, so it will be there. You go. With those wires, you could get aggressive as hell with it. But it's, it's this you will stay in place. Little V shapes. <laughs> And uh, I'm on my second ball of yarn. I've got, I'm planning to finish this and then use the third to make a very ruffled ruffle at the edge. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. So this is the shawl based on um, the character Oclis in the Chromatic Academy game that I'm playing on Mondays. Nice. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm very much enjoying uh, knitting character based things. (laughs) because uh, I've already knit the uh, uh, s- words are hard today I knit a scarf mm-hmm. for uh, the character Calvic and sent it to Josh who plays Cal and um, as soon as this one is done and I'm happy with it it's going to go to Lauren who plays Oculus and then I've got to uh-huh. figure out what I'm doing for the other two characters one of them wears a bright pink hoodie all the time and I'd really love to make a hoodie but Garments are challenging, and I'm not sure that I'm ready to design a garment yet. Mm. I don't know. I you don't know how to take that on. You could totally do it, but yeah, I mean. Yeah. When, when you're feeling it. The other thing is I have to ask a person who's a relatively new friend for all of their measurements. I mean, yeah. what size And that wear? feels a little... <laughs> I feel like I need to be close to friends with someone. It's very intimate. It is. It is very intimate to take all these measurements of your body and then send them to someone else. Uh, Look, your mom's got an idea. That's a good idea. Oh, because I do have the basics for that because I made a hooded shawl once before. Moms are smart. They are, especially mine. Mine's really (laughs) brilliant. (laughs) But yeah, that's what I've been working on is this, this design and the test knit. And I, I had to, I didn't have to, I chose to um, rewrite the beginning part of my notes because I pulled out the shawl twice before I got mm-hmm. happy with it. And it was kind of a hot mess, but just, this is what my notes are looking like right now. Your notes so, are so much prettier your than the notes is I so put pretty. together. <laughs> I, I do have so... kind of teacher handwriting. It's, uh, you have, yeah. you're, I've, seeing Danny's like that notebook in person Oh. It's amazing. I've seen it. Uh, hey, like are you she, okay? should, she should, she should no. charge admission. <laughs> she, yeah. Are you counting? No, I pulled my needle out. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, that happened to me earlier. It, it it truly is the faces we make while we're knitting. Know, though, right? It's true. <laughs> Yeah, your 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 illustration there, Danny, with with the writing underneath it makes me think of like an illuminated manuscript. Yes. I, I tried to do that, like with my designs, with my expositor shawl. Hey, I recognize that one. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It's beautiful. You should just publish that book and charge oh, admission oh, for one? people to see it. because oh. that was the inspiration picture. Yep. Of the little rock creature and my redacted socks that have. Some more scratching out, but you know. They're redacted. They are. They're <laughs> it actually works really well for that. So yeah, I, I try to keep my my design notebook pretty enough that it still feels inspiring because yeah. um, if it's just a whole bunch of chicken scratch and like pencil sketches, it doesn't feel as inspiring to me. So, yeah, this this resonates fair. with me. One of the last designs I did, I wrote on the interior of an Arbor Day card. Oh, and... I love that. <laughs> it was like, it was a blank card on the inside, but it was like, happy Arbor Day on the outside. Aww. And 
it was uh it's a pattern for um, a hat i think is a hat or a cowl but yeah but that's that's i got like scraps of paper and reading cards and notebooks just all over the place and yeah i, I wish i had something like you did well i do there's a lot of stuff that's that's attached with washi tape because mm, no. i you know when i get an idea i sketch it out on whatever like this is a piece of uh stationery that i got from work i've got a, a little notepad at work that was a, a christmas gift and i keep it there the the opposite side has my initial and pretty lines and stuff yeah no i need the back end of that <laughs> But for me, knitting is a, a very visual medium as well as a tactile one. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't. I don't think designing is a thing that I'll ever do. Ever say I, never. You never know. So yeah, exactly, like I like, like 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 I said, I said that I was never going to GM, and well, we all know how that turned <laughs> I'm, out. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna probably hard no for Pat, especially for a while at least, because like for me. A, math. Fuck that. Fuck that. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, is like, um, I don't know. I like being able to, s like, I can visualize things, but like actually seeing someone else have their picture, this is how it looks. I'm like, ah, yes, that yeah. makes sense. Um, but oh, yeah, yeah there's I don't percent something to be said for being able to look at the finished item and use that to figure out what you're doing also i'm only like what three years into knitting like yeah, you're still a baby knitter you don't have to yeah it's it's not it's not it's not for me yet and Fair. you know i would say probably like 75 plus percent of knitters never do any sort of design right now do I, so I, have, I would actually say i have that. ideas never do any official design an official design because yeah. almost everybody makes and alterations so. to a pattern does other things like that which is designing but they yeah. don't necessarily take that next step to like come up with original stuff or write it down and publish yeah. it or whatnot yeah. but i mean just just doing what we do Listen, you end up designing little d design yeah. i i'll just throw my ideas at the two designers in my life and <laughs> let you guys design it and i'll just That's test it. it the thing that's I see three designers on the call here, so I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, E. <laughs> three designers on the call. I'm so sorry. My designs include a essentially a bean that is panda colored, a reverse engineered Michael Kors hat, <laughs> and then the Owen hat. But still, designs. Gouts. Gouts. Well, also your your dice bags. That was that was small D designing. Yeah, but you still you still did it. Don't um, minimize ver it. Embrace very fun. It. Celebrate. Uh, Bridget, who was in our group, yeah, didn't realize it was you with the chat when we were all hanging out on my stream. <laughs> it was like, oh, is that is that the person that did our dice bags? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was like full on fangirling. Oh, Aww. I'm sorry, I missed that. That's so yeah. much fun. Um, yeah, um, yeah, Sally and Bridget, love them both. What am I doing? Counting. That's Are you counting? Doing. Two, <laughs> seventeen. Although I'm, I'm, I'm having to, I'm having to do the thing because this, uh, this yarn isn't caked. Uh, I'm having to do the thing where I hang it off of the corner of a chair in order to uh. not have it get tangled while I'm working it. Because I know I could send it to Danny and ask her to do it for me. Yeah. But that would have taken time, oh. and I wanted. To on the needles as soon as I knew what I was doing. So I, I'm planning to visit Ren in a couple oh, months. Okay. And okay. Uh, when I do, I'm going to bring you a Nosta pin mm. and show you how to wind your own center pull ball by hand using that. That would be amazing. Can you also teach me how to do that in October? I know I yes. have a winder, but my fucking winder is, I apparently I'm dumb. <laughs> You're not dumb. No, winders can be wonky. Yeah, oh, Greg. 
I was trying I to distract even... him from uh, from saying numbers. I'm sorry. I wasn't even saying <laughs> numbers this time. Well, but Chill. Drake went and got something, so we can distract yeah, him from no, saying numbers right. by making him show us the thing that he went and got. So <laughs> my contributor copy of The Nightmare Before Christmas... Uh, I'm sorry, Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, the official knitting guide to Halloween Town and Christmas Town. This is Must official. Yeah, very it's official. So cool. Yeah, the um and, and I can only show the cover. I can't open it up and show the inside, right. but the inside is amazing. Um and uh, but I have a design in here, which I can't tell you which one it is at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> tap, tap. And, uh, um <laughs> But when I can, I, I will certainly open it up and show you, show show everybody. But it's uh, um, really, really exciting. Uh, I got back from Boston, and this was Boy, waiting hefty. for me. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's it's hefty. What it's like a <clears throat> big book. Like a it looks like it's. Dollar, it looks like uh, it's 200. thicker than their other books. Yeah, because I have a few of them as well. It's uh, similar, a little bit thicker. It looks like I've got I've got three of them over there, um, but yeah, it's published by Inside Editions. Um, this one's written by Tannis Gray, uh, like all the other ones I think are as mm -hmm. well. And so, um, it's pretty cool because like she had she she reached out to a bunch of designers, asked for uh, proposals, and we sent them all in, and she she picked them up. And the officialness of it, the PDF proposal I wrote some at some point ended up in front of Tim Burton for real. Cause he had to like, he, cause he, he really cares about the intellectual property on, yeah. on, on this. Yeah. And uh, so he, so he had to personally approve every pattern that's in here. That's so so cool. of course i never sent him an email. It's like, right. you know, other people did, but. But, but your work was up. in front of Tim Burton. Yeah. Exactly. And he agreed to it. And he, and he agreed that it could be in his book. Uh, so, so that's shit. really that's so awesome. Cool. And it comes out September 26, I believe. You can pre-order it on the online places or check with your local yarn shop or local bookstores. Uh, pre-order it through them. Um, but yeah. It's uh, going to be a birthday gift it, to me. Yeah, it was. So, I mean, uh, like I've got I've got Tannis's other books and everything. And I've loved them all. Mm -hmm. And so it was really cool. Yeah, you because know, I've been... This is over a year ago, a year and a half or so ago when, when this, yeah. uh, you know, first, you know, came up and to actually hold it in my hand and flip through and be able to see all the other designs and like, and then I open it up to the page with my stuff and it's like, you know, the pattern name, Knitting Daddy Greg, right there on the page. Yeah. And I'm like, holy smokes, that's like so for that's real. That's amazing. I that's hope amazing. he laughed at your, like the name that was on the pattern. I hope he was like, <laughs> wait a minute. What? I hope you. I hope, uh, yeah. I hope I hope it gave, gave him a nice chuckle. Wondering what sorts of things make Tim Burton laugh. <laughs> I feel like seeing the the name Knitting Daddy would make him chuckle. I just, I um, always wonder about things like that, especially when with people who have such you know uh, a macabre aesthetic. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that the people who write horror and who have such a macabre like aesthetic, as far as like their writing or the or their craft tend to be like the most jovial unassuming people otherwise in life you're like that guy writes like terrible ridiculous horror really like it's always seems to work out like that they yeah, get all of the horror. worst they get all of the worst parts of themselves out and sell it to, to other people it's true mm -hmm. i actually have one of those books that i'm gonna give to you e when you're here oh oh I, so spe sweet. I specifically bought it to make things for uh, my sister's boyfriend, and now they're not together. So here you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Star Wars one. I so. hate that one. Eva e e e e e gets the, the the book in the divorce. <laughs> hey, I'm, I haven't knitted anything out of it, um, but I was like, you know what? Here, here, because like that, that one. one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Knitting nice. the galaxy. Yeah. I've got that one too. Yes. And I also did have not did get... anything out of it yet. Did we get that together for a I think reason? We did. I think we were going to do something out of it for uh, That's Pretty Crafty. And then that's never pretty did. Pretty Crafty? And then I went on vacation and you had a guest, I, I think is did. what happened. And yeah, instead we built little yeah. uh, metal models that I didn't cut my hands on it, so I was impressed. Thank God. <laughs> but yeah. So those little um, 
little metal earth things. Yeah. Oh. Those are fiddly AF. Yeah, I did a Millennium Falcon. That was about yay big when it was done. Yikes. Oi. I also think I have the Disney one. I've got that one too. That I feel like we order our books at the same time. You're like, oh, look at this one. I'm like, and Kurt. Yep. Speaking of things we order at the same time, it's it still, yeah, until the 20th, um, one of our previous fiber friends, Winsy Stitches, is doing pre-orders for a yeah. Halloween countdown yarn calendar. 12 mini skeins and then a big skein available mm -hmm. on his Etsy shop. Um, if you visit our website, because I, I did some stuff to the website. If you visit MajesticGoose.com and go to the Crits and Knits show, if you go down to we the bottom of the website? page. We, yes, yeah. we have a website. If you go down to the bottom of One the that is page, page. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Danny does the things. Um, at the bottom of the page, we have links to all of our previous fiber friends. And so there is a link to Rick's uh, Etsy shop. And I believe it is 145 US and pre-orders are open until the 20th. And it is a, um, what was it called? A spooky Isn't it like Barbie? slasher? Yeah, Horror it's Barbie. a slasher. Yeah, it's a slasher meets Barbie kind of thing. And I'm looking, I, forward, to, I'm looking forward to the pinks. I may have dug out um, a set of 12 balls of scraps and mini skeins from my stash because I want to design a shawl to do with the Barbie ones. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I, I want to do drop it out our... of scraps and stuff first so that I don't like work and rework and rework the pretty Barbie yarns. Mm. Oh, oh, I need to update that. Jesus. My <laughs> hair. <laughs> My hair. <laughs> also, update Ooh. that name. We're all getting new headshots soon, right? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, yeah. we gotta fix that. Yeah, I, I gave I gave Danny a picture earlier this week. I'm like, this picture is older than my daughter, <laughs> who's ele who's eleven. <laughs> yeah, I, Dan uh, Danny, I'm gonna get you a different one too, cause. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, we'll we'll work that out. But uh... I, I I feel like that one came from a oh look at my new hair, and Adam was like, and I will put this on the webs. <laughs> Uh, he's lucky he's cute. He might get stabbed a lot <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, we are, we're working on keeping the, uh, the website updated now. I, I am mm -hmm. updating it every time we switch our featured fiber friends. And I am hey, keeping our fast. previous featured fiber friends on the website. So Whew. we have a TikTok now. We do. We it has TikTok. one video on it. But hey, it's there. Or now. And there's a lot more that can come. We've got yes, that will come. We've got lots of little clips from other things that we can end up putting on there. Um, there there's got to be something about the horses. <laughs> That's gonna yeah. Drop that... your favorite clips. Yes, please chat. do oh, on the welcome. Discord. Also, we anyone, will... everyone in favor of getting uh, Greg to to dress up as Herder and just sing all of the songs and poems that he's yes. written yes. As, as TikTok. <laughs> Yes. Please, we can do that while we're together in October. I, I, I was thinking that. Yep. It, it, I'll, I'll bring my ukulele then. Excellent. Well, we, we'll we'll find you like some like oh, just get some overalls and like uh, <laughs> something or suspenders, not overalls. Like overalls are so great. Overalls. Overalls. Okay, well, overalls it is. <laughs> I mean, if you gotta go do pants, you gotta full on do pants. Absolutely. The full body pants. pants with straps. Listen, <laughs> if it's not if it's not kind of cold, I will also wear overalls with you. I have some goth ones. Nice. Yeah. I give away my overalls to my twelve year old niece. So they're shorts. Like uh, legs will leggies will be out. Short Short -alls. Those are called shortalls. Short -alls. Okay. Shortalls. But yeah. Leggies will Short be out. Holes. I know it's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will take the word of the person who works in the in the clothing industry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they come up with dumb names for stuff like shacket, when it could just as easily be jetter. <laughs> a jacket sweater. Yeah. Ew. Oh, uh, I thought a shacket was a jacket that got some duty on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
You just shack it. Dun, oh, dun, dun, dun. oh no, I'm sorry. A shack it is a shirt jacket. It was a swack it that was a, instead of a jetter. Oh my, oh. what a. They've been talking to Stephen West and his swants. Swants are awesome. <laughs> swants are pretty cool. Pants are swants are the swants. pants that I can get behind. <laughs> I still need to knit hey, those pants. I had a friend who hated the word jorts, so I could never do like any jorts jokes with her. You I'm can do wear jorts these with jutes us. with my jorts. Wait, do I know this person? No. Oh, okay. I have to ask. <laughs> like, yeah, no. <laughs> Jorts are jean shorts, right? Yes. Yes. Why did sometimes called mean? cutoffs? I prefer cutoffs because, like, if you're doing them right, you you wore out of you were out you wore out the knees of, of a pair of jeans, and then and then you cut them off about mid thigh. Yeah. And then they just get higher, and they become Daisy Dukes. Daisy Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Some of us made poor choices in our youth. Yeah. I made other poor choices, <laughs> not with Daisy Look, Dukes. Don't just limit it to our youth. I've been making <laughs> poor choices all my life. <laughs> Mood. And the best part about making poor choices in your in your adulthood is that you have adult money to back them up with. It, not if you make enough of those poor choices. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone else who hates jorts. <laughs> yeah. My apologies. I don't even really like wearing trigger shorts. Trigger warning jorts. What? It's a trigger warning jorts. <laughs> Good lord. Wait, Ernest, what was that about? about I don't like wearing shorts. Uh, honestly, like, um, I've been shorts averse most of my life. I finally, like, own a couple of pairs of shorts, like, in the past couple of years. But, like, you know, if it's not like, you know, going to the gym or something like that, I'm like, uh, shorts. Uh. I I also find that at my height, sh sometimes shorts turn into Daisy Dukes by themselves, so. Well, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, I, I think that I've only started to wear shorts because, you know, men have been embracing, like, the, you know, the sluggy little shorts aesthetic. So, like, I was like, well, uh, I'm just going to get some, like, four-inch shorts, I guess, and that's just going to be how it is. Beautiful. Go on, King. Yeah. Honestly, I was surprised that the shorter rolls uh, actually fit me because I, I bought them online and I went, well, this could be either very good or everything is going to be like up yeah. in my business. <laughs> I like out. cargo shorts and people can pry them off my cold dead legs. I don't care how unfashionable they are. I like having pockets to put my things in, my trinkets. Pockets well, and my also, trinkets. And yes. also pockets that are actually fucking pockets. Yeah, yeah I, yes. I, I am anti-cargo shorts, but all my pockets are huge. Yeah, yeah so all, you, all, all, all your pockets are masculine pockets, so you can actually, like, put shit in them. Well, I mean, also but, my but pockets But please are don't hyper. put shit literally in the pocket. But also my put pockets are hyper pockets because, like, I can put, like, you know, a whole game system in them or something, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Some of my pockets have pockets. Ridiculous. You know, the thing... High... Go oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was saying, in high school, I had a jean jacket, and um, I remember when I would go to my friend's house, I would just take my PlayStation and just, like, put it in the inside pocket of my jacket, along with two controllers in the other jacket, and I would just walk there, and nobody would know until I showed them and go, hey, guys. Want to buy a PlayStation? <laughs> that's, that's what happens when they you got are there before I did. A, a larger adult. My fun uh, story from not too long ago: I was buying shoes. Did I tell you guys about this? Yes, you mentioned it. Yeah, mentioned, in the chat. The but shoes. tell, tell, yeah. tell her. I was buying shoes, and normally I go actually to a store to purchase my shoes because the deals at the Skechers store are just as good as they are online, and. But I have not been out to buy shoes and I needed new ones. So I went to order them and I got, I buy kids shoes because I have small feet. And when you go to the store, it's just all the kids shoes together. Well, when you go online to purchase them, they break them up into two sets of sizes for kids. And it turns out that the size that I wear is not just kids. It is little kids ages four to eight. 
Oh my god. Oh. So um You were toddler shoes. <laughs> you have you have bitty feet. I have tiny eight year old feet. And I have the oh. opposite problem where I have to buy men's shoes. Uh but that would be why but, I don't get clothing with large pockets. <laughs> fair. Did you know uh, go ahead, Ernest, and then I'll tell my no, thing I, about I'm pockets just, on baby I'm just, clothes. I'm just scratching my head about this this tiny shoe thing because oh. I have the opposite have, problem. I have one thing before you go on okay, go. that I that I have to bitch about when it comes okay. to pants as a larger woman. Do not put tummy control in my fucking jeans. Stop. All it does is make the jeans ten times hotter and I'm pulling at them and like oh. At my size, there is no controlling the tummy. Stop it. Fucking everybody's like, well, you need to be thin. Look at me. That's not happening. Like, fuck off. You're not making my stomach look any smaller by putting some fucking, like, spandex bullshit around it. Like, just making me hot and sweaty. Stop. Especially because I go to Georgia all the time. Fuck. Yeah, it's, it's it's making you hot, not in the cool way that you want to be, <laughs> that they the, 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 the allege you should be. I, it's the it's the worst thing. I thought Torrid had figured that shit out and had stopped doing it, and I had just gotten rid of the jeans and had him, and I was like, yes, bye, and I bought jeans, and the motherfuckers came with the goddamn tummy control, and it said nothing on the website. God. Sorry. You should you, you should write a review. You should write to the company. Yep. The company don't give a shit about their their uh uh write a review base. and 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 put in all of those swears that you just used. I know. If nothing else, like, other people will read the review and know about it before they purchase them. Yeah. It's true. Um the thing the other thing is is like I've been trying very hard not to buy from them because they got pretty shitty with somebody who was like, Hey, I don't like this. Like so much so that they contacted their work at one point, and I'm like, oh, what? God. Yeah, it's That's a whole thing. I'll I'll explain it after. This is not, because I don't need Big Torrid coming after me. <laughs> Big Torrid. <laughs> no, I'll leave that joke alone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, as a, as a Twitch stream, we are on the map when Big Torrid is coming down. <laughs> <laughs> Want to get slapped with a cease and desist. <laughs> right. Defamation right. of Torrid. <laughs> Pockets. Pockets. And little kid clothes. So, did you know the reason that, like, baby clothes have pockets on them? Because what the hell is a baby going to need a pocket for? Is so they cannot be classified as sleepwear, so they do not have to meet sleepwear standards. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Sneaky. Huh. Yes. But also, but, but 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 also, little little boys' clothes have ridiculous pockets, and I want to have that level of pocket. Yes, we all do. I want little rocks and stuff. My... Yes, little rocks and stuff. Yes, but babies who are not even mobile do not need pockets. No, I want pockets in my sleepwear. <laughs> uh, I, I, wait, I... whoa, 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 wait, whoa, whoa. Nah. 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 Men's sl- sleep pants have fucking pockets. Don't okay, don't. Well, so, uh, Again with the pants. I mean, <laughs> where yeah. else are you anticipating putting pockets? <laughs> he wants one of those ye old like <laughs> nightgowns. Like, no, I don't know. I, 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 I have a pocket a night, right I here. Have a nightgown <laughs> and a cap. Like I like I'm coming downstairs to see what's a cla- what's a clattering with my little <laughs> my little candle. You know, I've got the nightgown. You got a lantern. <laughs> but but you need a pocket yeah, like, I got... to put your phone in in your nightgown when you come down to explore. Because you need your hands free for your weapon. Nope, I just got my little candle. <laughs> Ernest is ready to set his house on fire <laughs> if there is an intruder. Yeah. Like, I mean, legit though. <laughs> like, whatever it takes. Also, man. if an intruder comes in and Ernest being like six seven in a nightgown and cab with a candle, I'm getting the fuck out. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> and it's a giant fucking ghost. Just like, me, nope. So. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I must have the wrong house. <laughs> oh, uh, I will be taking my leave now. Yep, I my nightgown has, has blue has blue and white stripes on it, and I have a blue and white stripe matching hat. And you know, it it's floppy. You know, it's got a little dangle ball on it, and uh, that's how I sleep. 
I like <laughs> a precious. floppy dangle okay. ball. I, I, <laughs> I have a question. What were those hats like for? Keep your head warm. Keep your head warm, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because because those 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 old style buildings uh, are, drafty. Draft, are drafty as hell, and there's no central heating, so you okay. You, so they would do things like have the 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 heating pans where they would put coals into a pan and like slide that under the covers. But yeah, your head's out. I okay. So that's a hat. I know you do. I, but off. also, I I freeze you out of every room we share. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is true. So but... a couple of safs ago. Um, I think uh, I forget what the the name of the 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 ladies, the, a couple of sisters who were selling yarn. It was Toad Hollow or Toad something or ever. They I had hope a, it was Toad Hall because that makes me happy. Yeah, they had a mini skein set, and the pattern was like one of those nightcaps. And I got it, and it and I knitted it up, and it is delightful, and I love it. It's great. I don't wear it when I sleep though, because because yeah. <laughs> too much hair for that. Like, I feel yeah. like if I wore a hat to bed, I would be on fire. Yeah. That's why you need um, a ponytail hat, because then you just pull the hair out of the hat. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Could you imagine I mean, just this fringe straight up in a thing. ponytail? <laughs> <laughs> out of the top of the hat. Just like. <laughs> out of the way. I'm down for that. Yeah. I have I've made several oh, ponytail hats this summer because the, the nieces came to visit and they tried on my ponytail hat and loved it. So I made them each their own. Oh, I yeah. the thing is, it's very funny when Danny and I share a hotel room. Danny is like hoodie hat gloves <laughs> socks. And then I we have it cranked down so low that I'm still hot <laughs> like. I feel so bad, which is why Danny won't share a room with me anymore. No, I just no. No, I I will share a room. It's just I will be cold, and it's okay. No, honey, I'm I'm also I'm kidding. Like, but it was it, it was one of those things that we were talking. You're like, I don't know if I can. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm just I'm very sensitive to cold. No, that's fair. And we're very sensitive to heat. We are not a good pair of roommates. Oh, no. I'm hoping I don't freeze E out during sex. Definitely, definitely possible. Find me asleep in the lobby because I'm freezing everybody. <laughs> no, I like my room cold when I sleep. Yes. Perfect. I like to be snug as a bug. Yes. Snug as a bug in a rug. We do like being snuggled. Siggy came to visit, but she did not want to get up on my lap to be seen. Aww. Aww. Baby. My my cats would be exactly the opposite if I let them in. Uh, they would be uh, pr uh, presenting the board hole to camera. <laughs> yeah. how, mm. how are your cats with your yarn? They generally ignore it. Lucky I have I, I have yelled at them enough that they'll occasionally like you know do it do it do, do the face schmooze on it mm -hmm. but they uh after i after i lost my temper with billy they don't uh they don't chew it anymore M molly has decided that if she chews on my yarn it's in secret to <laughs> make sure i'm gone she ruined a pair of knitting needles this way no uh the oh. first pair that danny ever gave me Aww. and i come back in Aww. and i'm looking at them and they're splintered and i went what the fuck happened and then molly's just like I am the I, perfect cat. I didn't uh, do anything. And I'm not like, me. wasn't me. I had a really nice uh, rosewood crochet hook that I had in my crochet bag, in my project bag when I went to go visit a friend and hung out at her house for like maybe an hour tops. And while we were sitting there, I wasn't crocheting. We were just chatting and her cat chewed the hook off of the crochet hook. Oh. oh, I can't even salvage this. You chewed the wrong end, yeah. dude. Um, they've been... Percival has found out that, like, oh, he can chew on this part. And I'm like, uh -oh. no, you can't. I will, I will end everything. I love <laughs> you, buddy, but... But, no. but I will end you. This is why I have backups upon backups upon backups. I have so many um, cables cords now. Yeah, mm -hmm. cables. Because I'm like, I don't trust my fucking cat. 
cats do you now. have interchangeable yeah. needles or i do yes see that that helps That's... because then you can at least <laughs> just buy new cables yeah i've i stick to mostly having interchangeable ones there are a few needles that are like smaller yeah that i couldn't get interchangeable which i was like that's fine um it's when i knitted that hat i believe is the one that i had they were smaller needles and it took me forever to find yeah ones at all which whatever not worried about it uh also I need to put the axe back in the head before the horrors get me, so. Yes, you do. <laughs> Wait, are bad things going to happen with the axe being out? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm itch I still need to put that outside so Dan can tell me a story. Oh, <laughs> I've got mine sitting on the table over here just staring at me with its dead eyes. <laughs> I need to um, do a final coat of dark brown on it to fill in all the cracks but i also need to do the back half of the head i only did the front oh. half uh the so right after we started that i uh okay i uh finally got the other head that i was going to paint because that's my cosplay head that's the one i put wigs on uh but like mom came in with a box of stuff and was like uh this is all your delivery and I went oh and I opened it up and I went oh there's the axe oh there's the head so now I just have a male head in my closet and I'm like that's not gonna cause issues no never. nope not a bit <laughs> not a bit look if I can have mannequin torsos all over my house it'll be fine listen my, <laughs> my basement is full of puppets I don't need more your basement <laughs> is full of what <laughs> <laughs> Do you I live say, in a horror house? I, have you met me? <laughs> yes, but I haven't met your your families. <laughs> like, oh. I say full, but there's there's more puppets in the basement than there probably should be. Um, there's like I want to say four puppets and a dismembered mannequin in the basement. <laughs> um, hey. Okay, and so I have to explain now, right? Yes, yes. you do. Okay. Let explain me put, yourself, young lady. <laughs> let me put my A. Not, fun fact, none of this, me. I didn't do this. This is you not me. Live in the house. Which okay. is crazy. So that's, because... right, that's the only thing surprising I've heard so far. <laughs> <laughs> that I would be Everything the else, I'm like, oh yeah, that this totally tracks. Right, that I would be the problem. That I would have the puppets in the basement and the dis dismembered not dismembered it's just a part dismantled. mannequin <laughs> dismantled thank you um okay so the mannequin comes from my my dad is a theater dude oh. he's he's a president of the theater near us and all that they don't have storage so guess where some of their shit comes to my house uh so we have a bunch of costumes and prop weapons and mannequin heads like like that one i just realized that my dad has one of those downstairs i might steal it um but the other thing we have in the basement is puppets my sister made several puppets because she took a puppetry uh class in college because she was a theater major she didn't take them with her when she moved because what craziness would that be uh my dad was thinking about doing avenue q at yes. one point and he started accumulating puppets no making, making puppets making them um so one of them i went downstairs one time and there's this 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 puppet in like one of dad's old shirts looks like a guy I know and dad put glasses on it and I was like oh ew why do you look like that sir um and then the other one is eyeless <laughs> he didn't he hasn't finished in that one and it's just this and it's red which makes it even worse <laughs> so it has like it has the arms mouth no eyes completely naked and I'm just like Okay. <laughs> I, I I feel like this is something that would turn into an indie horror game very quickly. Welcome to my life. Five nights at DB's. 
Listen, I I am a horror writer for a reason. Apparently, the reason is the puppets in the basement. Do they come and whisper to you at night? God, listen. If they did, uh, pro- probably. She just doesn't realize it. Oh God! No, I'm just a heavy enough sleeper. I don't hear them. <laughs> you don't hear them consciously. Uh, well, yeah. You know. They, can, they they can't get in because it's too cold in the room. So. <laughs> They open the oh fuck. <laughs> so uh I have a recommendation sometime when you're in Atlanta, go visit the Puppetry Museum, which is um an amazing museum in I Atlanta. I don't like puppets. <laughs> well, like Kermit oh, the Frog okay. is there. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it, 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 there's a there's... Jim Henson collection there. Ooh. And then there's also there's all sorts of cool stuff there. Space the puppets out. <laughs> I, I do. I, there's a lot of things while I'm in Atlanta that I want to go do. I want to go to like yeah. the Coca-Cola uh, museum, the one. aquarium. Um, oh, the aquarium's great. There's another museum down there. What is it? It's like all in that area. Mm. Or is it only? It may be only those, those two. Those are the things. two big ones that everyone. Those are the yeah. two. Yeah, that are right there. Yeah, I haven't but, done those. Um, a couple of times ago, we stayed at a hotel that was like right across the street from there. So we we went to those museums and then drove to the ballpark to see the baseball games. Nice. It is it is one of those things that I should probably do touristy things while I'm in Georgia, but I'm there during Dragon Con and it's yeah. impossible to do. Yeah. They do shows at the aquarium, but they sell out very quickly. And it's like, OK, bye. Yeah. The one um, time. There was one year that I went to Dragon Con and there was like a midnight uh, aquarium tour thing. Yeah. And that was fantastic. That's like every year still. I think they still do that. I don't know if it's at midnight anymore, but it's like at a nighttime thing. Yeah. Which is cool. And I would love to do that. But I'm also like the panic that I had while walking through the crowd at the parade was massive and I was with a friend and when I'm with people I do not show my panic very much because I'm like I don't need you worrying about me do not worry about me I'm fine um so yeah well I'm the mom friend I have to take care of everybody else (laughs) so yeah Uh, definitely as Sam will be like have you drank any water today (laughs) (laughs) yes ma'am thank good but yeah, it's it's just <laughs> yes, hydrate, hydrate or dihydrate, hydrate hippies. <laughs> yep. I... <laughs> I meant to bring down my fun cup. I'll try and remember that for next time. I've got several knitting themed mugs, and I like them. And some of them are vaguely inappropriate, and I like that too. Perfect. Love vaguely inappropriate things. Is we also vegan? love just inappropriate uh, things. It like, doesn't have holy, to be vaguely. Holy yeah. inappropriate things. Uh, is, is, is one of them the hooker mug? Uh, no, it's the fingering mug. Oh, got it. <laughs> As one does. My <laughs> my uh, my girlfriend got me a mug one year, hefty mug, that says I'm flu. Uh, something about shutting the fuck up, and I was like, hmm. Yep. Appropriate. Yep. I was like, ah, oh, yes. I don't drink coffee, though, so I get, like, hot chocolate with marshmallows in it, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> That's adorable. I love that. I love hot chocolate. I, yes. I, if it wasn't so dang hot. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's not time yet. Um, but it's getting chilly here, and I'm like, yes. Let the heat go away. But we might also be in false fall, so. Mm-hmm. I yeah, we, we, we get that here, too. I'm hoping for a, a nice snowy winter, though. I need it in my life. <laughs> also need it to get my bonuses, but, you I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's not purely for the aesthetic. No, well, it, it is kind of... It, Fun fact, I don't own a winter coat. I live in the north, and I don't own a winter coat. And I never have. Been here for six years. I just avoid the outside. I'm like, ah, it's cold? Cool. I'll stay right here. I am the opposite. I live in the south, and I do not own shorts. I don't... I... 
I've only recently become more comfortable with like wearing shorts and that's because of society standards and now I'm like I don't give a fuck uh I wear a lot of things that I would that I would not have worn as a younger woman um but because I'm like yeah whatever I don't like shorts either Danny <laughs> no I don't I don't wear them often, but if I am, my legs are so my legs are so white. If I am my legs hot are so hairy. to leave my legs bare, I'm gonna wear a skirt or a dress. Mm. There's that. But yes. Otherwise, I am living in leggings. Jeans for me all the time. Same. Also jeans. Um, yeah. But also because I own them, slacks, and not like not like khakis. Cause fuck khakis. Uh, but like dress pants and things like that like they're comfortable I'm like oh yeah I'll wear these all day every day I mean it's good to find a comfortable office wear yes that I bought right before the pandemic and then haven't gone to the office since that sounds correct yeah and also my office is like you can wear jeans I'm like okay so bye that I will that I will wear and you can wear tennis shoes to work too cool just no open toed. I'm like, perfect. I don't like open toe anyway. Here we go. No free toes. No free <laughs> well, I mean, utilities. They're like, mm, please don't lose a toe. Yeah. Please. We, we don't want to pay the workman's comp for that. Yeah. Do yeah. we have enough issues without, you know, people dropping a box on their foot with an open toe? True enough. Well, I a friend. Go ahead. A, a, a friend of mine works at HR at uh, Gallo Glass that make all the bottles that the Gallo wine goes into, um, and she's like, you know, before taking this job, I did not think that HR included yelling at people to put their damn pants on. <laughs> no, no, there's a special kind of of overpants that they have to wear oh. because they're working oh. with molten glass. Oh. Right. So, oh, so, so she just has like... to yell at people because she's like, there is thousand degree glass inches away from you. Can you maybe wear the thing that we provide for you so that you don't burn all of your skin off? I thought, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were telling me that people were just like Donald ducking it with molten <laughs> glass. And I'm like, who is stupid enough to have their genitals that close to melting glass? <laughs> I, I, I will say though that is pretty much exactly how she phrases it on Facebook. <laughs> is is as I did not think that my job was to tell grown ass adults to wear pants at work, but here we are. Oh well, yeah. I, I I also because of like OSHA and whatnot look at things and go hmm, that doesn't look safe. <laughs> is that OSHA approved? I don't think so. Um. There have been also. I never thought we would have to tell people to like. I don't know. Don't free climb equipment. Well, in like, our annual safety training, we have a slide about don't use a rolling chair to stand to get things from tall shelves. Things that short people do have to be reminded of periodically because I have definitely used rolling chairs to climb onto things. Tiana, I have good balance. I don't care <laughs> until you don't. <laughs> until you don't. So the other and thing, then I fall. Okay. I listen as someone as tall as I am. When I fall, it's not a oh quick fall to the floor. It's a this is how you Tim die. <laughs> <laughs> She's to going laugh. down. We're yelling timber. <laughs> And also, always, every fucking time I fall in public, it's there's some dude in a truck that sees it happen. And they're like, oh. hey, are you okay? Don't look at me! <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least they're asking nicely. That's something. I know, but oh. don't. Don't look at me. <laughs> look away from my shame. <laughs> <laughs> Just pretend this didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if I see someone fall, I will like pause for a second to see if they get back up. But if they don't, then I go see if everything's okay. Yeah. Always a man in a truck. <laughs> I'm <just> like, <laughs> leave me alone. It'd be weird if it was the same man in the same truck, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that that would yes, that would be. 
don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, safety. Uh, some of our safety videos that I'm concerned about is when they start talking about, like, oh, when you're working on a substation, or oh, when you're in a bucket truck, and I'm over here like, if I'm in a bucket truck, something has gone horrifically wrong. I can't imagine any circumstance where you would have to do that. The world is ending, they're like, you used to work in utilities? Doesn't mean anything! It was the administrative so, side. When I worked at AT and T, I was a software developer. They taught me how to climb telephone poles to install DSL, um, because uh, they I was I was a uh, um, salaried and not in a union, and the union was threatening to strike. And so, if the union struck, then management was going to have. And I'm not even management, but I was salaried. Yeah. We, they were going to send us out to to uh install stuff so i got to go to texas to learn how to climb telephone poles which was a lot of fun and i could install dsl and all sorts of stuff and then of course they spent they must have spent millions of dollars to, and they do they would do it at like every six years when the contract was up because it, it always got that close and it never happened but they would spend millions of dollars just in case just in case yep so, so yeah. they wouldn't put me in a bucket truck, but I did learn how to drive the big vans. I just, it, it, it's it, the amount, the, the other thing that we also get like taught is like hypothermia and heat stroke and things like that. And I'm like, I am like, this is good information to know just in general, but also if I get hypothermia in the office, something is wrong. <laughs> like. Or or, or 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 it just means that you've gotten too close to the uh, to, to the controller. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's insanity. Welcome to life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, I think that feels like a good place to to call it a night. <laughs> Be We've safe. all gone quiet. <laughs> we have. It's it's that. It's been a week. Thank Where you all your for PPE? joining us, though. We appreciate it. We yeah. hope you were, were entertained by some of our knitting. I know we all got at least a couple of rows in. I think so. Yeah, yeah. definitely I, more than I normally get caught in. Pre-order Greg's, book. Pre -order Greg's yes. book. Pre-order Greg's book. Yes. Pre-order Greg's book. Not my book. book. The book in which Greg I have a in. single pattern. <laughs> Uh, Greg, you're the only one in there that we know, so it is right. your book. So yeah, <laughs> this this is my book. I that one it. Is it is my book. Is this your name is on book. the cover? No, Tannis is oh, name is on the cover. Oh <laughs> fuck! Is your name write your name on the is inside your... cover? So we know it's my yours. name is on page 181. Okay, oh, we well, go. see, your name is in the book. There. I don't have my name in that book. But just to uh, let our audience know, the few of you who are still hanging out that we're talking about doing a knit along from this book coming up. So Ooh. think about that. Are we? Are we? Yes. Cool. <laughs> yes. We're talking about it. We Surprise. may not do it, but we're talking about it. <laughs> the idea is being tossed around and maybe not here, maybe somewhere else, but I'm sure there will okay. be knit alongs. No, that's fine. I just was <laughs> like, I guess I haven't been paying attention. Look, I've got a lot of chats going on, and I can't remember which ones are with who and where. I think that was just with I think me, Dan. It might have been just you and me. <laughs> oh, because he also looked like confused the... as well. Whoa, did we? Okay, well, two of us have been talking about it. <laughs> That's what matters. Some as long us. as two of us are on board, the rest it is not of us a quorum. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're fine. It's fine. But several of us are pre ordering the book. Greg already has a copy, so. There's a good chance that we'll do some sort of knit along, or at least uh, talk about it incessantly once it's available. Yes, there will be that for sure. But we will be back in two weeks' time. I believe that's going to be August 30th, if I did my date math right this time, unlike last time when I was off by a whole week again. I won't be there. Oh. I'm driving down to Georgia. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I think Nelitha may be sitting in a corner eavesdropping. That's what she was doing when exactly. I uh, uh I I will give you another option if you want, Danny. We'll talk. Okay. But yes, uh most of us should be back in two weeks' time. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, until then, happy knitting. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.